Hey there folks, I'm Mark, in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse, and guess what, we got new Drake. Same the rest of the charts are not much better. And this, it's Billboard Breakdown. Am I the only one who feels increasingly underwhelmed by the Hot 100 these days? Don't get me wrong, from a pure work standpoint, I don't want to go back to months of successive album bombs that we saw before, but for as much as some folks have hyped up 2023, I've really been struggling to be impressed by the charting hits this year. It's not quite a disaster yet, the summer can always turn things around pretty fast, but the more I look at the Hot 100 every single week, yeah, this is looking really rough. I don't see many signs that it's going to get better either. Hell, do you want evidence? Take a look at our top 10, where Last Night by Morgan Wallen is squatting at number 1 for another week. It's not really surprising either. It lost out in the top streaming spot, but with radio on the major upswing, it's handily clinching on margins. And hey, I guess I gotta thank him for blocking our debut at number 2, right? Because that's Search and Rescue by Drake. It's dominant on streaming, and there's radio coming, but but given how the song's reception's been less than stellar to say the least, it's gonna have to do a lot to make a serious run here. It was enough to scrape over Flowers by Miley Cyrus at number 3, which has slipped into radio drop-off as streaming is sliding as well, and yet it was enough to hold up over Kill Bill by SZA, which fell to number 4, which saw the sales collapse correspond with streaming and radio starting to stall out. Now the big question is whether or not that remix with Doja Cat is enough to spike it to the top. I personally think that's likely, but we'll have to see. Now all this comfortably holds over Creepin' by Metro Boomin' 21 Savage and The Weeknd at number 5, which is also in Radio Freefall, but given that's where the majority of its strength is, it's likely going to slide that much faster, and compare that to Calm Down by Rima and Selena Gomez up to number 6, where the streaming isn't as strong as it probably should be, but the radio run is ridiculous. It's not yet a contender, but it's making the case. It handily leapt over Die For You, by The Weeknd and Ariana Grande at number 7, although big radio losses are probably the bigger factor here. And then there's Boys a Liar Part 2 by Pink Pantheris and Ice Spice at number 8, where despite the radio pickups, they're just not enough to deal with streaming that seems to be evaporating. Then we got Antihero by Taylor Swift at number 9, taking its sweet time in its exit. But then we got the second new top 10 entry, Ella Bella Solo by Eslabon Armado and Peso Pluma. There we have it, folks. The first regional Mexican song to break the top 10 on a big streaming surge backed up by YouTube and yet precisely zero radio. So I'm not sure I see that added boost that's going to push it any higher. Just set your expectations appropriately here. But before we get into more of that, let's take a look at our losers and dropouts, where sadly the two big ones in the latter category are both from SZA. Shirt is handily getting its year end list spot, but Nobody Gets Me is probably just missing it. Not much in the way of losers this week, but it does say something that I call all of these songs at least good or representative of something that could be good. Tyler the Creator saw losses for both Dog Tooth to 69 and Sorry Not Sorry at 82. What He Didn't Do by Carly Pierce looks like it's gonna fall way short of the year end list spot down at 97. It's on its way out. Fight the Feeling by Rod Wave lost off the debut to 41. And Five Leaf Clover by Luke Combs is drying up at 59. We'll have to see if country radio really gets behind it. Then there's Cuff It by Beyonce at 44. I mean, it's got its year-end list spot. I don't dislike the song. But I can't be the only one who feels like we should have gotten more singles from Renaissance, especially some of the bangers that would have worked. I don't even love that album, but I feel like there was a real missed opportunity here. Let's be honest, I'd be happy to see Church Girl make a chart run. But now on to our returns and gains. And I'm sorry, this is a big net negative for me. Memory Lane by Old Dominion and the Solitary Return at 96. Okay, fine. I don't care much about it. But when the biggest game goes to Slut Me Out by Enelie Choppa at 28, we have a problem. Can't say country's really holding up well here either with Handle on You by Parker McCollum at 31 or Dancing in the Country by Tyler Hubbard at 37. I mean, they're not bad songs, but they're neither of them that memorable. But again, the big story here is the regional Mexican sound that is 
flooding up the charts, buoyed by Peso Pluma and Netanyahu Keno. Their collaboration PRC is up to 49, Peso Pluma took Por La Noches to 51, AMG with Gabito Ballesteros joining them at 53, and CAG La Pisa with Fresa Regida and Netanyahu Keno hit 70. Look, I'm trying to find something to like with this sound, but the bad production and the lack of song structure is leaving them just really unmemorable for me. At least Cupid by 5050 is getting some traction up to 60 because of some nice streaming. Thank God for small blessings, I guess. But now on to, uh, not gonna lie, it's a pretty rough week of new arrivals. Let's get this started with number 99, WTF by Young Boy Never Broke Again featuring Nicki Minaj. So remember how I have said how the label shift for Youngboy would lead to diminished impacts in the Hot 100? Here's the prime example. You got a lead-off single with a feature from Nicki, and it barely charts at all. And honestly, kind of a shame because it's the most I've liked a Youngboy song in some time. I really like the strings and the gospel in that sample that builds off the guitar well, where I was actually kind of hoping Youngboy would avoid trap percussion altogether, maybe go something more old school. But then we get that flimsy skitter and the chalky knock and a bass that smothers the tune, but okay, fine. There's still more structure to Youngboy's paranoia and notice of so many unfamiliar faces around him who didn't put in the time, especially in the trenches. And you know, Nikki's kind of a good fit for that. I think her verse is a little bit basic. I wish she had a lot more interplay with Youngboy, but when she herself started crooning at the end of her verse, I thought there was potential. I mean, I'm not going to call this great. It feels like Youngboy got the Nikki co-sign by Little Else, and the song kind of ends once she's done, but I think it's pretty decent. It's worth hearing. Number 94, Never Felt So Alone by Labyrinth. Talking about Labyrinth's solo career has always been weird for me. He's well connected to work with a lot of major names, but as a singer and presence himself, I've always felt so vaguely underwhelmed. And this song is a prime example of that weirdness, originally featured in the background of one of the two special episodes of Euphoria released in 2020, and now getting packaged as a proper single with uncredited vocals from Billie Eilish and a co-production credit from Phineas. And it's kind of a shame the song's a complete mess. Yeah, Billy is gonna sound amazing as the bass shakes the shuddering strings and the piano arrangement. And the singing that she delivers on the second verse is legit as all hell. And you know what? I don't think the loneliness amidst the faded opulence execution, it kind of materializes. But none of the percussion builds to any sort of stable groove and the lack of structure gets really glaring by the end with no proper hook. But again, I think the real problem's Labyrinth. The over processing of his vocals and the excess of effects as musical punctuation, it comes across as way more anonymous, but also way goofier than it really should. Uh, again, there are traces of a really good idea here, but none of it feels fleshed out. And the fact they had this since 2020, they're only releasing it because it went semi-viral on TikTok. I mean, I kind of think that speaks for itself. Just saying. Number 87, El Azul by Junior H and Peso Pluma. <sighs> another week, another regional Mexican song backed up by Peso Pluma with farting staccato trumpets, tinny acoustics, rough live vocal mixing, and a feeling of amateurishness that stopped being charming a while ago, even as this song can't even keep a consistent tempo. I will say Junior H comes across as more polished here compared to Peso Pluma's nasal presence, but when you translate the lyrics and realize that it's all about flexing with their newfound reputation, predominantly with their cars? No, I don't care for this either. It's not the worst I've heard in this subgenre, but when very few of these songs stand out, I think there's a problem. Just saying. Number 85, Careful by NF and Corday. Doesn't go plat, it'll go go. Keep it up front now, tiptoe. I'll be at the house trying to lay low. Ducking and dodging a promo. Sit on my roof like J. Cole. Yeah, sit on my roof like J. Cole. 
So NF got two songs to chart this week. I'll admit this was the one that attracted even any interest from me. Corday has not delivered as strongly as I've hoped, but he's a rapper I would rather seek out over NF. And uh, for as goddamn weird as it is to hear NF on this sort of flexing song, I can actually hear how this could work with the hollowed out vocal sample and NF's hook, which actually works pretty damn well. Yeah, the flexing is kind of hollow on the hook, and the rather cheap-sounding trap percussion feels weirdly sequenced to me. The snares hit at an odd interval for the first half of the hook, but NF kind of nails the intensity, and I like how he's taken his Christian rap side for distributing the wealth that he's accumulated to help family and community as he knows he came out of poverty. That's a good message. I think the problem might actually be Corday here. I like his voice on this production, his flow is solid as hell, but his attempt to add more of a spiritual dimension to his flexing feels kind of underthought, especially with the inclusion of the meeting Kanye bar that's got a much uglier ring to it in 2023. I might, it might be surprising for me to say that I like this, but what might be more surprising is that if Corday wasn't on it, I'd probably like it a lot more. Number 83, Peaches by Jack Black. Peaches, peaches, peaches. Ah, oh, yeah. Ah. Okay, look, outside of Pokemon, I wasn't a Nintendo kid. I don't really have time for video games these days. I had less than zero interest for the Super Mario Brothers movie. And while we're here, Jack Black's musical comedy doesn't work nearly as well for me as it probably should, both in and outside of Tenacious D. And that's true here too. It's an overly melodramatic piano ballad moment where it's less Bowser and more Jack Black trying to channel Meatloaf, and it feels really underdeveloped for running barely 90 seconds. Might make some young kids laugh for the funny voice, and it's not the worst cartoon-related music I've heard in recent years. It's just not worth any more attention. Move on. Number 71, Strike Holster by Lil Yachty. I was high as fuck, tweaking. I was trying to strike shit, I was trying to strike shit, I was trying to strike shit, like a mess late night. Yeah. So let me get this straight, Lil Yanni drops his most experimental and arguably his best record to date, and yet instead of pushing any songs from it, we get a single prime for another project planned for next year, and it's depressingly a return to the god-awful gauzy trap he was trying before Let's Start Here. The synth mixing might have some swell, but the drums and vocal mixing sound painfully canned, and they don't give Lil Yachty the space his voice could use to warble more effectively. His flow is still clumsy as hell. And the flimsy lyrics about trying to strike and get something working amidst the incoherent brand name porn. Dude, you had something working. This is not it. I really hope for the sake of God there's no meme or TikTok run for this. Lil Yachty tried to swerve. I'd love to see something from that get actual traction rather than this crap. Skip it. Number 54, Happy by NF. Happy. Not gonna lie, I was worried about a song called Happy from NF, because joy is the one emotion I do not associate with his music, and this is gonna come across as more negative than it should coming from me, but this feels like NF attempting to make an AJR song, maybe succeeding a little bit too well. The sawing cello, the piano, the overcompressed vocal timbre and harmonies, the choppy acoustics driving through the hook, even down to the brand of introspection where he can't find happiness as he pleads to God, and you're left wondering with all the success and privilege that he brags about what's being missed there. But where there's that painfully forced plasticity to AJR's approach, NF's conclusion on not really knowing who he would be if he was content in his life and was happy happy that actually has some resonance for me. I get someone being in their own head so much that they catastrophize, they don't cherish what they've accomplished because they think that the trauma is what holds them together. Now the musical execution around this idea is really rough, it's not to my taste at all, even if it now absolutely makes sense why NF wants to work with AJR, and yet this song kind of makes me see how it could work. It's fine for what it is. I'll say it. And finally, number two, Search and Rescue by Drake. When I take it from me, look, they don't even need to be as famous as me. I don't think I meet them at the places I be. Oh God, 
I don't care. I don't understand why Drake is pushing new music now when you think he'd be trying to wring a little bit more out of her loss, which was an atrocious album, but he could probably wring one more single out of it. Granted, even the fan buzz around the song has been a lot rougher than you might expect, so I went in with rock bottom expectations. And that was appropriate, because this blows. The singing is painfully rough amidst the crap vocal mixing, which clips against the leaded bass, the faded piano, and the utterly stale trap percussion. Drake sounds lobotomized. I never want to hear him say the word mommy ever again. And while the twinkling flip after the pitch shifted bridge had a bit of potential, the choice to let those pitch shifted vocals drag over the rest of the song, it sounds awful. Then there's the content. I might be able to buy Drake as finally looking to settle down, look for someone to save him, not the other way around. But there's two reasons why I'm dubious. Number one, he's still trying to control this girl with all his money and a couple pick demands, alongside a promise he won't put her in bad positions. And two, there's that sample from Keeping Up With The Kardashians, where even if Drake might feel some kinship for Kim Kardashian post-divorce, it has this feel of being a sub against Kanye for just putting her on the song. I got no reason to trust Drake. It makes the entire song come across as faintly gross. I've seen Drake play this R&B game before with women who are with other men, trying to lure more girls in with the belief that he might change. We're nearly 15 years in, buddy. Some of us know better. And that's our week. The worst feels like a toss-up, but Search and Rescue by Drake is going to piss me off hearing it so much in Toronto for the next couple of months. It's going to edge up over Strike Holster by Lil Yachty as the dishonorable mention. It's more here for disappointment rather than anything else. Can't imagine I'm saying that about Lil Yachty, but there you go. For the best... Ugh, not much to choose from. I'm going with Careful by NF and Corday. Honorable mention to WTF by Youngboy Never Broke Again and Nicki Minaj. You would actually be surprised how close the other NF song was to getting on this list, let me tell you. Next week, I'm not sure, but I hope SZA and Doja Cat make their play for the number one. We'll have to see how that goes. But until then, I'm Mark. You're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliated with Spectrum Pulse. I'll see you next time.